And now I'm in the steamy age of menopause. Now I didn't even know what menopause was. I knew it was, you know, I knew what it was. I knew what it was, I just didn't realize that it could actually send you mad. <laughs> I started to get hot flushes, and at first they were just, hmm, I'm just a bit hot. I do some red wine. And then they just kept coming over and over again, and then they kept me awake at night, and, and they'd make my makeup run off my face during performances, and then they made my children think their mother had been invaded by a body snatcher. <laughs> so I went to a gynecologist who explained what was happening and said it could take anywhere from between two years and to about 15 years. So I was happy with that. <laughs> So I took HRT, but it didn't work for me. And anyway, what do, what, where do all the old hormone patches go? Where do they go? Into the landfill that will eventually give us tomato plants the size of modern baby pigs? <laughs> or cows with PMT? Once a month they refuse to give milk and just want a bit of a weep in the back paddy. <laughs> and pass along end up sewage treatment plants like Werribee, Victoria. Well, that's not bad. Werribee is now a wonderful wetland who just produced some of the most powerful man-eating pelicans on earth. <laughs> anyway, well, um, a friend, so the, anyway, the hormones didn't work, and then a friend told me about Remy Feather, which is a natural Right, so I bought a packet and I threw them in my bag and because they're natural, I would just swallow one when I thought about it, like a Tic Tac. <laughs> that didn't work either. So I went back to the guy and he would put me on to Livial, which is some sort of fake hormone, which made me feel so agitated, I thought I would pop. It is strange how we women study the backs of cereal to make sure we are not putting anything nasty into our systems, like too much sugar, and then we will pop every substance known to stop us sweating. <laughs> Desperate and other friends also suggested Remy Fennett, so this time I took the suggestion seriously. I'm not a herbal person, but I went and talked to a professor about Remy Fennon and all the evidence that goes with it and he upped the dose and I took them regularly and bingo, I felt fantastic. And I feel fantastic and I get the occasional hot flushes but they are not waking me up. Now they do really do feel like power surges. <laughs> they do and the children have their mother back again, not a pod person. For those of you old enough to remember the body snatchers. I can smile and mean it. I used to just smile like this. <laughs> what I really noticed going to menopause was that not many people talked about menopause. My mother, who would talk about anything, never talked about menopause. So I said to her, did you go through menopause? And she said, oh my God, it was the worst five years of my life. And I said, why didn't you talk to me about it? She told me about labor. I thought that was the worst five years of her life. And that was only her labor with me. <laughs> According to mum's stories, her labor always lasted about five years. It involved tongs and machinery, and anyway. <laughs> but it's certainly, menopause is certainly not talked about publicly, which is strange, given that menopause is almost an epidemic now. It is the menopause epidemic. Why is it getting the attention it deserves? We have a well-documented aging population. 70% of our population is aging. The other 30% are evidently getting younger and younger. <laughs> These figures are supplied by the United Nations. Most of the aging population are boomers. They are now in their 50s. A menopausal Vesuvius rumbling. Now at first glance, the symptoms seem relatively benign. Women miserably shuffling around the shops, fanning themselves, or hunched at the gym, wringing out their underwear. 
Back at home, flinging back the doona and screeching at their husbands, I hate the way you breathe when you eat. <laughs>